We're at the Cimarron Valley Research Station today, and I'm showing what I've got here with a squash companion planting study. This is actually the third year for it. Some of you may have seen the episode that was taped a few years back. What we've got is yellow straight neck summer squash, and it's interplanted, in this case, with just one herb, and this is feverfew. It's here in the middle. We have also looked at white yarrow in the past, and we're looking at that in some additional plots, but we don't have it here at Perkins. The configuration you're looking at in these plots, you see you have squash plants on the edge of the bed and the fever few down the middle. And you can see that the fever few plants have gotten pretty good size to them. These were actually planted about two weeks before we transplanted the squash in order to give them a head start. You can easily see that they're open to the sun here. We've got the squash on the sides. What we're trying to do is we're hoping that the squash will kind of fall away a little bit to the edge of the bed and leave the fever few open in the middle so that they're not in as much competition with the squash as they've been. One of the problems we found is that eventually the squash gets so big that they overwhelm the herbs. This is a uh, trick, if you would, a way to try to preserve the herbs a little bit longer. And there's still two fever few plants paired up with each squash. Well, companion planting is an interesting subject to study because there's a lot of, if you would, folk information about it, but there's very little in the scientific literature that either says it works or it doesn't. So that's why we've undertaken this three-year study, is to try to provide some scientific data to see how well it works. Earlier on, we showed you a plot with the fever few in the middle. This is a different configuration these were also planted two weeks ahead of the squash, but now we've got the fever few almost in what you would call a wall on the edge of the plots and two squash per hill in the middle. This is the configuration that we've also got on the cooperating growers farms and what we looked at in the pilot study in 2013. The idea is to just kind of create a barrier on the edge of the plots so hopefully if the squash bugs moving in and they don't like the fever few, they kind of hit that barrier and it deters them and gives the squash more protection. The disadvantage is that pretty soon the squash are going to get big and overwhelm those plants and that's why we thought we might try to give them a two-week head start. We've also got treatments here where they were planted at the same time as the squash and that's what we've been doing in the past. Now some of these plants look a little rough this year and as I'm sure you're aware we've had record rainfall in Oklahoma and so we've had some problems with that even with our raised beds here. One of the problems that we run into is illustrated here, and this is poor pollination. What you see here in my left hand is a squash that has not been completely pollinated, and you can see that down here the seeds haven't developed inside, and so the squash is not fully developed around it, whereas here in my right hand, this is the normal yellow straight neck squash. This is what we hope it should look like with proper pollination. The bees don't like the rain any more than we do. And so that's been the problem. You can see that squash is insect pollinated. It's got these big flowers that are very attractive to bees. But if the bees aren't working because they don't like the weather, you're not going to get adequate pollination. Another problem we've had from excessive rainfall is an actual rot on the blossom end of some of the fruit. And we'll show you that next. Well, here's an example of a squash with the rot that's coming in from the blossom end. It's normal in squash sometimes to have a fungus come and attack the wilting flower, but it really takes off when you have all of the wet weather like we had this year. And now the fungus hasn't stopped with the flower. It's gone back into the ovary, into the future squash fruit, and you can see that it's rotting it. And this is, this is going to end up being a cull. We've seen this at all three locations this year. It's been a real problem, and it's just due to the excessive rain. Well, this is the third year of the study, and we don't have final results yet. We're waiting to see what we get from our three locations this year. 
We can say that it looks like there's some possibility that the squash bugs don't like the plots with the fever few as well as the plots that don't have either the yarrow or no herbs at all. But we have to get some more information and more data here before we can make an actual conclusion. And nothing's going to prevent the squash bug. The best that we can do is to try to deter them and reduce the total numbers through the use of these herbs. Now, I know companion planting is of interest to a lot of folks. And again, I want to emphasize that a lot of the information is, if you would, folk information. And what little bit is there from a scientific standpoint it's always best to go to a university resource and see what your Cooperative Extension Service can advise you about it. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.